Entrato in questo momento Sam Crotlin e Lee Collins e il regista Christian Bitter. E aggiunge a noi anche il produttore Martin Moscovitz. Allora, grazie di essere qui con noi. Il film è stato visto dalla stampa stamattina, avete avuto delle reazioni piuttosto calde. È molto atteso da un pubblico di teenager che da stamattina sta spalmato. Invece, come sapete, come conoscete ormai bene Sandra Hebron, eh, conosce molto bene il cinema in generale e naturalmente anche il cinema, soprattutto il cinema del suo paese. Io sto un po' tirando per le lunghe, sperando che tutti abbiano la cuffietta. Ecco. E come consuetudine sarà Sandra a fare la prima domanda. to um, make the first question to Christian, actually. Um, I know that you've made, quite a f you've made several feature films in Germany already, but this is your first film in the English language, and I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about what it was about this project that really captured your imagination, why you wanted to, to be the director of this film. Oh, uh, there, there's a lot of reasons, like mainly because I always, you know, loved uh, a good romantic comedy and I loved Nothing Nothing Hill and When Harry Met Sally and things like that, and I think uh, they haven't been done in a while, and so I, I was um, longing for them as an audience member, and so I thought, okay, hey, then I, you know, do one myself, and I sat one day uh, with Martin here, Martin Moskowitz, and um, so... I just did a film in Germany, uh, Vicky and the Treasure of the Gods, which is a kids' adventure film, and it has a lot of, it's shot in 3D, it has a lot of visual effects, it's all on sound stages and everything. And so I said, you know, Martin, I'd love to do the opposite. I'd love to do something handheld and uh, just characters and, uh, you know, maybe about, you know, love, maybe for a little bit grown up audience also. And so um, he said, you know, we just have the right thing for you. And, and so I, I read, I read just, you know, very few uh, words about it. And I thought it was great because it reminded me a lot of when Herman Sally and, uh, you know, I truly believe that everybody uh, had the situation where, um, you know, they, they were, like, maybe secretly, but in love with that was friend. So I think it's a very relaxing thing. Bene. Prima di dare la parola a voi, in realtà volevo fare una domanda al produttore. Nel senso che l'altro giorno abbiamo avuto qui la conferenza stampa di Cresce, che è un film con dei bambini e tradizionalmente i bambini sono <coughs> alcuni dei soggetti più complessi da dirigere, da coinvolgere in una cosa così faticosa e complicata come il cinema. Questo è un film su teenager. Se, se il cinema assomiglia alla vita dovrebbe essere molto più complicato farlo con i teenager o con qualcuno che deve interpretare dei teenager. Volevo chiedere se è stato effettivamente così. is a question for uh, Christian more than for, for, for me. Uh, uh, in this case, you know, it was all about the material and about the cast. I mean, if you've seen the movie, you'll see that it's the chemistry that's on screen is so outrageously great and that makes the film with a fantastic story. And that was, it doesn't really matter whether it's teenagers or children or adults it's all about a story that grabs you and the performance that makes you believe that this is uh, actually happening. Mario before we open it up I'd like to just ask a question to Lily and Sam because I think one of the things that makes the film work so well is that you create this incredibly believable relationship between each other and there's a very strong sense of the intimacy of that. I wonder if you could each talk a little bit about working with Christian to create that real sense of truthfulness somehow. Well, the first time that Sam and I met was with Christian in a, at a hotel. And he basically just had us sit this close to each other. And we had to make observations about one another. and give reasons as to why we thought that that person, that the other person was doing the action that they were doing. And it really forced us to kind of get into the psyche of one another and to 
break down any awkward boundaries right away because that was probably the most awkward thing to do right away with two people that had never met. But it was this amazing experience that we then had to share from that point on. We had a history. We had something that was already there that wasn't... Um, you, you couldn't create a scene that was better than that. It just happened the way that it happened and it only happened that way because it was Sam and I and I think you know, I felt like when I met Sam that I'd known him for years, and I, that's kind of a rare thing. And um, you can try to work on that, but it, it was it, there was nothing to be worked on. I think it was all um, just kind of moving forward, knowing that, and creating new memories to add to the story. And um, to, just to add to that, like we spent a lot of time before we started filming after that initial uh, meeting kind of having breakfast and hanging out basically in social circumstances and I think we quickly realized that we had a very, very similar sense of humor and uh, we like to party. Uh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, but no, it, we basically, you know, we, we spent a lot of time together and kind of unconsciously kind of getting to know one another. We never sort of sat down and said, right, what's your favorite color? Um, what did you do when you were 11 for your birthday party? You know, we, we never kind of had to work. It was very, very easy, right from the get-go. And the truth of it is, we basically spent the film, in a sense, living on top of one another. You know, we were on set all day, every day. So every time, we, you know, the, the relationship grew naturally, or very organically. And I think, um, you know, you start to kind of really care about the person who, in fact, that goes for like, across the board, like the entire crew, the entire cast. It, especially in an intimate film like this, it becomes very, very close knit very quickly. And you know, the moments that I'd see Rosie crying on screen, I as Sam and I as Alex would cry too. And it couldn't, you couldn't run that really. Um, so in the acting world, we say that that's N A R, which is no acting required. Bene, allora siamo aperti a ricevere le vostre domande, nel frattempo vi faccio notare che il produttore Martin Moscovitz tornerà a casa sua con questa foto che ha appena eh, messo qui, eh, in cui ha fotografato il cartello sold out eh, che sarà la nostra biglietteria per il film che ha prodotto. Uh, I, I just heard from, from uh, Mr. Muller that uh, it was sold out within four hours, faster than any other movie of the festival. So I think for me as a producer, besides being very proud of the film, that makes me extremely happy. <laughs> allora. Eccola lì. Agenzia Alza. Buongiorno, Francesca Pierleoni. Eh, volevo chiedere a Sam e a Lili, visto che il film è tratto da un bestseller di un'autrice molto amata, soprattutto dai più giovani, Cecilia Ehrn, volevo sapere eh, quanto spazio eh, vi siete presi per creare i personaggi e quanto invece siete stati ai personaggi come li avete letti nel libro. Grazie. Um, I did not read the book before shooting. Um, I, I've been in a couple films now that have started out as books, and I find that it gets quite complicated when you're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of pages or sometimes four or five books in a series, and then you have a script which can only be a maximum of like two hours, and uh, everything is condensed so much that um, what's in the book is it in the script is what's in the script in the book and it gets quite confusing so it's more the essence of the character that I try to make sure I'm bringing into the movie um, but also having Cecilia on set quite a bit and having her blessing and having her enthusiasm is, is more important to me than having the book's enthusiasm you know it's like having the actual author um, sign off on, on your perspective on a character is so important and I think um, what attracted me about this script was that I, what, I felt that I was Rosie. So I felt that there were so many Rosie-isms that melted in with Lily-isms that 
they kind of just kind of came naturally. So um, I wanted to bring the essence of Rosie, but I felt that she was so similar to me that I felt that I was kind of just living what I was reading. Sam, <laughs> how do you feel? Um, yeah, I, I had read the book prior to shooting, but not before I read the script for the first time. And I think for obvious reasons, uh, the interpretation of the script had to change slightly, and therefore the characters had to sort of slightly alter. Um, but at the same time, there wasn't any drastic, drastic kind of personality traits that were missed or you know needed to add in. Um, and I think similar to, to to Lily and the fact that she felt very similar to Rosie, um, I, I didn't even feel like I felt like Alex. I was Alex, you know, and I don't mean that in a method acting kind of way. I didn't go method and live live like Alex for a, and go to Harvard University. But um, you know, I think our personalities are identical, and every choice that he makes along the way, I think I would have made the right and not the right choice, the, the same choice. Um, and so that, therefore it's sort of easy, I think, to approach a script like that. It's the first time I've ever done anything like that before, um, but I, I also think it's important to... You inter everyone interprets a, a novel or a character and so, so, so differently, and I, I experienced the sort of worst negative end of that with Finnick O'Dare and Hunger Games. Like everyone was like, he's totally not Finnick O'Dare, but you can't make everybody happy, you have to do what you can with what you've you're given, um, and you do the best you can. And I think I hope people enjoy our interpretations of the characters that we we. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna, just gonna leave it there. Thank you very much. Allora c'è un'altra domanda qui sulla sinistra. Hi, first of all, I love the movie. You both are adorable. And some of the lines really cracked me up, really. <laughs> so, um, before watching the movie, I thought I was going to watch something about fate. But right now, I don't think so, because uh, I think that it's more a movie about right and wrong choices. If you make the wrong choices uh, at a certain point over your life, you know, happiness comes in delay. So I would like you to give a comment about this. I don't know if this is the message the book wanted to deliver, so I would like you to say something about this. This is both for the actor and the director, the producer. I think everything happens for a reason. That's always been my motto. Um, and as long as you're making a decision for you in that moment that you feel is right, it can't be a wrong decision. Um, and wherever that leads you, you would never have gotten there had you made the decision that you made. So I don't see decisions as right and wrong. I just see them as decisions made in the moment that may not have gone the way that you had hoped for, but that's life. Um, so as much as you may not understand why something's happening in the moment, you have to have the belief that something bigger is gonna come because of that. And whether that's good or bad, it just, whatever comes, comes, and it's how you deal with that that defines who you are. So I think, again, it's kind of that typical thing of it's all about the journey, not necessarily the destination. And I think with Rosie and Alex, they learn so much about themselves along the way that almost the, de the decisions were just kind of the catalyst to start their, their journeys of growing up. And wherever they end up, they wouldn't have gotten there had they not had those decisions happen to them so early on. I mean, for me, I think what uh, not only the, the film but also the novel really touches on is it's not not so much right and wrong uh, choices. It's more to do with timing. And I think I think everyone needs their time in whatever capacity to to gain life experience to kind of explore other things. And you know, I mean, if if he really really wanted to uh, kind of avoid all the heartbreak along the way. There, there, he had an opportunity, but he didn't. And there's a reason for that. And similar to like Lily's quote, you know, everything happens for a reason. I think it's true. Everything, whether that's fateful or destiny or whatever you want to, you know, however you want to say it, there's a reason 
for you at that point in your life for not doing what you're doing. Um, and I live by the motto of like, no regrets, you know. Um, uh, you know it's not part of the no regrets. <laughs> but no regrets is, I think, you know, I, I wouldn't be where I am today if I regretted any decision that I've ever made. And I've definitely made mistakes. I think everyone can confess to that. But I think you just have to kind of think ahead as opposed to think, think about mistakes you've made. And for me, what I, what I think is, um, nice about, about this material, or movies in general, is that, you know, I think it's very inspiring in the way that there are choices which every advisor would say to the characters, oh, how, how can you be so stupid, that was the wrong choice now, right? But it was still the choices for both of them that felt right at the moment, and I think that's, you know, maybe the hidden message, uh, and you know, we didn't make the movie to, to send a message, we made the movie so that you can have fun with it, but I think the hidden message is, um, if you do what you feel is right, and not what your surrounding is telling you, or what is expected from you, or whatever, if you just do what you feel is right, it might be, you know, it might appear wrong to somebody else, and it might be, it might appear wrong to you at that moment, you know, Rosie has a lot of situations where you would go, oh, dude, you, uh, girl, I mean, you just, you just, uh, you know, ruined your future and everything. But, in the end, because of making all these choices, she, you know, gets what she deserves. And I think that's very true to life, and I think that's a nice thing to really, you know, remind audiences of. Um, uh, there's not a lot to add to all of this. Uh, I mean, for, I can only speak about the movie. I think that, uh, um, it was the right choice to, to make this movie and it was the right choice to bring this wonderful group of incredibly talented and wonderful people together and uh, it was the right choice to come to Rome with it. Uh, so, I mean, in this case I think we made all the right choices. Um, uh, there is definitely a reason for that somewhere. <laughs> Allora, c'è lo spazio per l'ultima domanda, prego. Domanda per Sam e Lili. Eh, abbiamo visto fuori, ci sono da questa mattina presto molte ragazze che vi aspettano, che vi vogliono vedere. Quanto siete abituati a queste Sorry, manifestazioni? Sorry, we're not getting the translation. Yes, we can hear you now, thank you. Sorry, madam. Devo ripetere? Ah, ok. E volevo sapere quanto siete abituati a queste manifestazioni d'affetto dei fan e come le vedete, insomma, una grande gratificazione. Se quando tornate a casa cioè, trovate tutte queste persone di fronte a casa vostra. I hope so. <ride> Um, we haven't seen them outside yet, but we've heard that they're there. Um, that's a, it's an amazing honor. It's it's humbling. It's exciting. I'm so proud of this movie. So to be able to share it with people that are so enthusiastic is a gift. Um, it's, a, I, it's nothing about this ever gets normal. So, and I don't want it to get normal because it's exciting and it keeps it fresh and it keeps it alive, you know, and, and I, um, it's weird, I think it's, it's, it's strange, it's strange to have people camped out to see me, us, you know, because I remember, like, my friends camping out to get their favorite album, you know, a day before it came out, and that was like, because I was so excited to just get an album, this is, they're just coming to see us, <laughs> it's such a weird thing. Yeah, I mean, I think what I find is really strange is only about six years ago I was on the red carpet or behind those barriers on the other side of it, so kind of, you know, have felt what they're feeling and that excitement, that, that, that passion. I mean, what I will say about especially the Italian audiences is, is that, that, you know, they are so passionate and so, so uh, supportive and, uh, I don't know, crazy in a great way. <laughs> I mean, that in the most positive way possible. Um, but no, it's, it's something I've never experienced, or, or I know that's a lot. I experienced it a few weeks ago with the riot or posh, um, when we kind of, yeah, had, had got thrust into 
that world for the first time. But I mean, I, all I can say is I love Italy and I love Rome. And to have the opportunity to bring this film that you're very, very proud of to, and kind of share it with this part of Europe is, is a real treat. So um, you can never get used to this. It's, it's a dream come true. Really. Bene, allora ringraziamo Martin Moscovic da Fede Spacco per le scelte giuste per questa donna, ringraziamo Lucia Twitter e naturalmente Sam Lili, grazie. E anche grazie a Sara. Grazie. Grazie mille.